All right, what I'd like to do in this video is to uh, go through a problem from the homework that asks us to use a graphing calculator to estimate the solutions to this equation. Remember, solve means to find all of the values of x, which makes this particular equation true. In other words, I'm looking for values of x that will make this entire expression 0. And uh, one of the ways that we can do that with our graphing calculator is to use it to calculate and plot lots of points and find points that plot really close to zero. Um, the problem from the homework tells us that all of the solutions lie on the interval. All of the x values that will make this zero lie on this interval from negative 10 to 10. Uh, and that's, they did that so that you can do it using the standard viewing window on your TI calculator, which runs X and Y, both from negative 10 to 10. Uh, as we go further on in the course, you'll, you'll learn different ways to find and estimate where zeros are and maybe get a better sense of how to adjust your viewing window to make sure that you capture all the zeros. But right now we're focusing on the process of how to use the calculator to estimate those x values that will make this expression zero. All right, so bringing our calculator over here, uh, we'll get it on here, and what we're going to do is we're going to type our uh, the expression into the function editor. So you'll hit y equals, and we'll use y1 for our first function. And the x, your variable, uh, most of the time it will be x. Sometimes we use these other variables like t or theta, but in this case it's x. And now we want to cube it. There's no cubed button on the calculator, but we can raise x to any power, so we raise it to the third power. Now, we shouldn't keep typing right now because it's, if you'll notice, that cursor is still up in the exponent. If we kept typing, it would be adding things to the exponent. So we'll hit the arrow key over. We right arrow, and that moves us out of the exponent and down next. Now we're going to subtract 7 x and then plus 3. So that puts our expression and we're wondering for what values of x is this 0. And what I want to do right now is with this expression, or function is the term we use, you should be familiar with that, for this particular function y1, we can actually plot the various values for given x's, and we can look at those in a table. And like if I wanted to do it by hand, I could type uh, x and y, and I would say when x equals 0, well, 0 minus 0, 0 plus 3, that's 3. When x equals 1, 1 minus 7 is negative 6, plus 3 is negative 3. And I could try a bunch of different points. Your calculator will do this quickly for you if you type second table, where it says graph there. That brings up a table, and it starts calculating all of these values so that you can get a sense of what these are. And it'll even, if you arrow up, you can look at the negative values. So, for example, from negative 3 to 3, these are the different values. It starts at negative 3 and then it jumps up to 9. So somewhere between negative 3 and 2, there's probably a 0. And you can do this. Once you've looked at some of the table values, you can actually graph the function. Sorry, hit the, hit the graph without hitting second. And you'll notice for different values of x, at each place it takes an x and a y value, and it just plots lots of points. When we do this, we pick lots of values for x, plot points, and just kind of connect them with a curve. Your calculator is doing the same thing. It just does it faster. At this point, it looks like between 0 and 10, x is 0 three times. It's 0 somewhere near negative 3. It's 0 somewhere about eh, maybe 1 half. And it's 0 up here near positive, between 2 and 3, but maybe 2 and a half close to that. We want to use our calculator to estimate it precisely, and we're going to go to two decimal places. To do this, we're going to use the calc function, so it's going to be second trace. So that'll get to the calculate menu, and we want to calculate a zero. We want to calculate when our expression is zero. 
So we arrow down to zero and we hit enter. Now you notice that it's zero three times, so we're going to help our calculator out and tell it which zero we're looking for. Graphically, it wants, to, it wants us to give it a range of x values in which to look. So I want to set up a range of x values that's around one of these zeros. So I'm going to, since my uh, cursor starts here at x equals zero, I'm going to go from zero to one and find this particular x value that makes y zero, or estimated anyway. So I'm going to leave my left bound equal to one, and I'll hit enter, right? And then I'm going to arrow over, and you'll notice my x moves along the curve, and now I went from above zero to below zero on my y value. My x values move from left to right, and I'm to the right of the x value that's zero that I'm looking for. So my right bound is about one. You can also just type in a bound. Like my first one started at zero, I could just type x equals one for my right bound. So you notice that it now says I'm looking for zeros between these two x values from zero to one. All right, and then it asks me to guess a value in between. So I'll just move a little closer, and this is, you know, close to a half. This is a guess. I just arrowed in, or you could type 0.5 is my guess. Hit enter. And it now goes through and uses a thing called Newton's method to find an approximation of the x value that makes it zero. And that's going to be when x is 0.441, y is approximately zero. Okay, and you can do that two more times to find each of the others. Uh, since this video is close to seven minutes, I'll wrap it up there.